Hi everyone, this is Haya again. I'd firstly like to apologize for the gap between the last video and this one. I know it's been a little bit, but I was actually struggling with my own mental health a little bit uh, the last few weeks, so I apologize for taking some time off. Um, but I'm back with another video, and I hope you enjoy the content. Um, as you can see in the description today, I will be talking about body image, self-esteem, and how to improve body image related issues. So first of all, what is body image? Body image is the way we view or perceive ourselves and our body. Um, we can have negative or distorted body image, which is a product of many things like eating disorders or body dysmorphic disorder, which is a mental diagnosis of its own. Um, body image issues can also result from bullying or pre-existing self-esteem issues. Um, they can also occur because of conditions like depression or social anxiety, where the sufferer is more um, fixated on their body or just hard on themselves because of a lack of self-esteem. So first of all, uh, I would like to talk about my own experiences a little bit with body image issues. I have always had a very poor body image because of my PTSD and trauma. Trauma can definitely impact the way we view ourselves and the way we perceive our bodies. It definitely changes the relationship you have with your body because in a lot of ways, trauma takes away your agency and your control or your autonomy over your body. And it's hard to recover from something like that. Um, I also struggled with an eating disorder, which started around the ages of 9 or 10, I would say. And although it was initially kind of minor and insignificant, it was definitely insidious because it became more and more aggressive throughout the years. Um, four years ago, though, I went into an inpatient treatment facility, which was for about six weeks, I think. And I got back on track. I've been in remission since. I've had a little bit of slip-ups every now and then, but I am a normal BMI, which stands for body mass index, and I've been maintaining my weight since. I still struggle with body image issues, and I tend to be very hard on myself, but throughout my years of treatment and just my own experiences, I'd like to share what has helped me and what has kind of improved the way I see myself. So first of all, if you're down on yourself based on what you see around you, this world is very much um, glamorized and polished and we tend to see the best versions of people. First of all, like social media can be very positive because you can form really significant and meaningful relationships with people, meet like-minded people across the globe, especially if you struggle to find like-minded people in your local area. Um, you can have access to so much knowledge and information just at your fingertips, but there's also downsides. People tend to portray the very best versions of themselves online, which can be damaging for people's self-esteem. Um, Instagram, for example, is something that can definitely impact your self-esteem in a negative way because, again, everyone's using these filters and Photoshop and Facetune are so accessible these days. And everyone's just like looking their best. They're taking pictures from their best angles using the best possible lighting they can uh, get a hand off. And that's not really how things are in reality. It's important to also look at your faults or your little imperfections, which again are socially determined anyway. Uh, like people's faults or people's um, insecurities kind of just stem from a place of social standards, which is what I'm going to talk about next. People's perception of body ideals and beauty standards vary so much across time and culture. In the 60s and 70s, models were very skinny. There was a trend for very, very, a very skinny, small frame, which led to a lot of people dieting and using diet pills or laxatives and eating disorders became very common within the modeling industry. 
this is unfortunately something people still struggle with. Like Victoria's Secret, for example, came under fire for having a very specific body standard for their models. Um, and putting their models on these very like strict regimes for exercise and only restricting them to a certain amount of calories. So it's definitely still an issue in the beauty industry. However, beauty standards do vary. Um, per, for me personally, like I'm 22, I've seen a drastic change in beauty standards. Like when I was younger, I'd see magazines where they'd always give you like tips on slimming down and stuff. There was definitely a preference for a smaller frame, but in the 2010s I noticed there was a shift and people tend to now, maybe if not favor, then encourage a more curvy body frame or a more voluptuous figure. The hourglass figure became popular. There's more, um, I guess, fashion icons or models or role models that have influenced the way young girls and boys perceive themselves. So beauty standards shift throughout time. Your body is not limited to a certain cookie cutter model that you have to prescribe to. You may not look like a certain person you see on billboards. You may not look like a famous Instagram model, for example, but they're beautiful in their own way and you're beautiful in your own. Two beautiful things do not have to look alike to be appreciated and to be acknowledged as beautiful. For example, butterflies and lakes look very different, but butterflies and lakes are both beautiful. Um, preferences vary so much too. Like, for example, something that helped me a lot with my body image and the way I viewed myself in terms of weight and size was aesthetics and fashion choices. Um, I'm a huge music fan and uh, my love for metal and goth music has heavily influenced my style as you can probably tell by now. So for me, just having a personal style which reflected my tastes, my interests, and was a representation of what I was like on the inside was a huge pushback to the negative body image I had and my fixation on weight and size because I could shift that focus from like slimming down, for example, to, oh, maybe I can wear merch, which represents my favorite bands, or maybe I can showcase my different fashion inspirations, like I'm very much influenced by 80s goth fashion, so maybe I can represent some of that and, you know, just show it off. That was really important for me because, again, it was also a way of regaining that autonomy that I lost over my body because I'm just like, hey, this is what I like and this is what I'm going to reflect. That was definitely a very helpful thing for me. I know not everyone is into fashion, but you know, like if you can just, it can be anything. Like if you can shift the focus from size to something different, then that's really helpful too. I know some ex eating disorder patients who started doing martial arts or who started doing body lifting, sorry, weightlifting. <laughs> they started working out more, not for slimming down or looking a certain way necessarily, not for reaching a certain ideal weight or like a goal weight, but kind of just to strengthen their body and strengthen their core and shift that attention from, oh, I have to be a certain size, I have to be a certain way to acknowledge myself or to feel better about myself, but just using their body to its full potential in different ways. Martial arts gave them a lot of strength, both mentally and physically, because they felt like they could defend themselves better. They had more physical strength, um, just more fortitude in their body. Similarly, I had a friend who struggled with anorexia nervosa, and she started lifting, and she has these incredible muscles now, and she couldn't care less about the number on the scale. She's just getting stronger and stronger every day, and I think that's amazing. Um, what else? I think body image issues, uh, if they are related to like a specific mental illness, like an eating disorder or body dysmorphic disorder, are a little bit more challenging to address because those are actual mental diagnoses 
that need treatment. I will be making a video on my personal anorexia story. Uh, I will be talking about my entire experience with it and what worked for me and what treatment looks like for anorexia, but that's a topic for a different day. I'd like to keep this a little bit shorter. Um, but body, like for example, body dysmorphic disorder is when you fixate on a certain body part or all of your body, and it can look like constantly checking yourself out in the mirror, not because you know, you're arrogant or full of yourself, it's absolutely the opposite. It's because you are so hard on yourself and you want to make sure you look okay. So you're looking at yourself at any reflective surfaces, touching things up, avoiding public, you know, staying at home, all of that. It becomes a very challenging thing to deal with. So I would recommend actual treatment for that. This video was just to hopefully boost your confidence in terms of how you look and to remind yourself that Bodies are so diverse and so beautiful. We come in so many different shapes and sizes and colors and textures and things like blemishes and scars and stretch marks. All of that tell a story. Your canvas is not blank. Your canvas is replete with so much of your human experience and what defines you. Birthmarks and stretch marks and scars, they all tell a story and they make you unique. Beauty is skin deep. Your body is a vessel that carries the rest of you. It carries who you are. It shows your character, your personality. It is so much more than just what you look like on the inside. It is a vehicle and a vessel for who you are. And don't, I know like I struggle with bullying myself. Many people can tear you down for the basis of how you look, but trust me, everyone is really beautiful in their own right. And you do not have to reduce yourself to comparisons or social limitations to feel beautiful and worthy. One last tip, if you are there, if you're ready, if your self-esteem allows it, is positive affirmations. Um, facing yourself in the mirror can be challenging, especially if you do have body dysmorphic disorder or an eating disorder. They actually do discourage body checking because it becomes a compulsive behavior in those conditions. However, if you're capable of doing so, Look in the mirror and say a positive affirmation about yourself. For example, I am loved, I am beautiful, I am strong, I am worthy, I am important. Stuff like that can really retrain your negative thoughts and give you a different perspective on how you are. And again, there's no pressure. Everyone recovers or improves or advances at their own pace. So. Yeah, just remember that beauty standards are so malleable and they do not mean anything, really. Everyone defines their own standard or their own preference, and I promise that regardless of how your brain sees you, I believe that you're all beautiful in your own unique way, and I'm sure one day you will see that yourself. And I hope that anyone out there who's struggling with their body or struggling with their self-esteem knows that regardless of how they feel, they are so important and worthy, and I'm here for all of you. If you have any questions or concerns, please drop them in the comments. If you have any more suggestions, I'm very new to this, please let me know how I can improve my videos. Um, my next topic will probably address eating disorders more specifically. I hope you all have a wonderful day, and thank you so much for watching.